Hello and welcome to today's qualifications webinar, The Power of Thinking to Grow Your Career. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate. The presentation will last for approximately 40 minutes and you'll be able to send text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the chat box of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation and we'll collect and address as many as we can during the Q&A session at the end. Unfortunately, we don't send slides of the presentation. However, the webinar will be available to watch on demand via our Content Hub exchange in the next couple of working days. I would now like to hand over to Imran Farouk, who will be today's presenter. Imran. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Maureen. Uh, let's get going. I am excited to be presenting today. And my big promise to you is that there will be something in this presentation which you can take away and take action on, and it will have a great impact on your career. In return, what I'd like you to do is webinars are a distraction. So if you can disconnect from your emails, disconnect your mobile phone, and focus on this webinar just for a short period of time, and there will be something you can take, but it requires your attention and focus. There are two parts to this presentation. Firstly, looking at the power of thinking. The second part will dive into a bit of detail on the level six revised qualifications. If you have a pen and a piece of paper, grab it. There's a magic in using a pen and a piece of paper to make notes. So if you see something in this presentation, look for the one thing that's going to make a, a big impact on your career and put it down as an action. So the first thing, have you spent some time thinking about your personal pathway? Have you spent some time designing it? For those of you who do have well-designed career pathways, you can see progress. It's less stressful. For those of you who haven't spent time, it can be a stressful journey. Right now, you're probably doing one or four things. You've either got a promotion, which is great, so you now have to perform in your new role. You might be in a position where you have come to a bit of a blocker and you're struggling to move to the next stage. There are things stopping you from progressing. You might be in a situation where it's going a bit downhill. You may have fallen into a bit of a hole and you're stuck there. And I've spoken to marketers who have been there for years and figuring out a way out. Or it could be worse. You may have to take a few side steps in your career or you're going backwards. You may have to take some kind of demotion to make progress. So we'll talk about some of these things. And there's lots of you on this call are going to all be at different stages. Some of you at the start of your journey, some of you on a very lonely journey. And have a think about where are you now? Where do you want to be in the future? What are these roles? What are these points in your career? There could be career points, like a manager, director, board level. There could be other points. If you're a freelancer, then you're living in a very different world, or if you're a consultant, these points might be the clients you want to gain in the future. So, so why have I decided to focus on the power of thinking? And you probably can look back and reflect. The person you were five years ago is not the same person you are now. And you may have seen this thing, same old thinking, same old results. What you got here, what got you here, won't necessarily get you there. So maybe for you to move to the next level, you have to become a different person. And you may have everything in place externally, the skills, the people, but there's a component which is inside you, which is your brain, your internal, and if there's limitations within that, that is going to stop you from progressing. There's 
many th many things that what I'm going to talk about is called if you're following any brain scientists, and there's something called um, a reticular activating system. And the concept is what you think about is what you bring about, or what you think is what you're going to become. And the concept is your eyes and ears can only see and hear what your brain is telling them. So whatever this system is ca called, it's not important. I'm not a brain scientist. But what I want to make you aware of is you have a filter in your brain which controls the information and the sounds that are put to the forefront of your brain. It's something that's subconscious, but can be controlled consciously as well. An example of this, if you were in an airport with lots of noises around you, in fact, there's probably a thousand things taking place around you, and you're walking through looking for your gate, there's kids making noises, there's loud speakers, there's so many different things happening. But if your name got called out, you would just hear it straight away. So that is, that is a filter. And there's many examples. A common example is if you decided to purchase a car or were interested in a car, all of a sudden you start seeing that car on the road everywhere. So you become conscious that that is there. Well, the reality is that, that them cars were already there in the first place, but the filter is bringing that information to the forefront of your brain. So one of the things that I'm going to talk about in this presentation is what can you insert into that filter to help you in your career path? So first thing, everything starts with a thought. There are thousands and thousands of thoughts running through your brain every day. Some of them leap out, some of them stick, some of them evolve. Some of them just disappear. Um, some of them combined with the right elements can spring you into action. So I'm going to talk about some of them elements. What are the elements that connected with thoughts can catapult you into action? And action is, you know, there's a number of things that you can do. I mean, you can decide to take no action. You can take the right action. You can take the wrong action. But you could also take massive action. If the emotions are in place and you um, have a high level of motivation and some of the things I'm going to talk about, that can catapult you into action. For one of the things I want to talk about is, is success um, and mindset. Um, so success is a choice you have to make. Um, so you have to treat success as a duty, as an obligation, as a responsibility. It's not a choice, it's not a job, but you have to proactively commit to it. You have to ask yourself, are you fulfilling your potential? Do you want success? Is more success bad for you? What is the impact of it around you? The reasons why I want to um, talk about this power of thinking is because it's an important element that can help you leap over potential hurdles you have in your career. Also, more importantly, some of the elements I'm going to talk about is if you fall in one of these holes, how do you, get, how do you bounce back up? For some people, rock bottom is a trampoline. You bounce back up. And things happen in your life. For some of you, you might spend five minutes crying about it and you bounce back up. For some of you, you might spend days, weeks, months. And I've come across people in their careers who have spent years in their role that they've hated and they haven't figured out a way to bounce up and make progress. This is a model I'm working on called the Pivotal Marketer. Uh, so it's something I've developed. And as a marketer um, moving into the next uh, uh, 20 years, I mean, I've been educating thousands of marketers. So I think a marketer these days has to have um, more uh, in terms of not just knowledge, there's a lot more a marketer has to do to be successful in the marketing career. So it's not just about learning the four P's and the seven P's and the modern marketing model. 
It's about becoming a marketer that's pivotal. And there's many aspects of that. Um, so if you're following me on LinkedIn, you can connect with me. I'm talking more about this model, but the presentation today takes some aspects which are related to thinking from this model. And before I go into my main part of the presentation, a quick insight into my journey. I've spent the last 20 years educating marketers. I've been a pioneer in helping developing marketing qualifications. So we run a master's in digital marketing and um, the CIM suite of qualifications. I've also stepped into the practical world of consultancy. And that's doing sales and marketing for businesses which are generating millions in revenue. So I head up a company called MMC Learning, which is a CIM study center. And also a joint venture company with the Manchester Metropolitan University. But the reason why I do what I do is to help marketers, to help marketers succeed. And we have a 2025 mission to help 10,000 marketers succeed. So let's start going to um, this slide deck. And the first thing I want you to have a look at is to understand the structure of this presentation. So I'm going to talk about things which will help you catapult over these hurdles that you've got. But I also want to cover some reflections on things that might be getting you down and might pull you into these holes. And I'll come and I'll give you some exercises to do off the back of this presentation to get more clarity. So the first thing, and you probably come, may have come across this talk by Simon Sinek on TED. He talks about um, a purpose. So the first thing that needs to be strong is you need to get clarity on your purpose. It may be an inspiration inside you, it may be something that's calling out internally that is asking you to do something. And Simon Sinek, when he did his research, he researched a number of leaders uh, out there, Steve Jobs to um, Martin Luther King. And what he found was these leaders that are big influencers always talked about their why and the purpose before the how and the what. And that's strong, it's magnetic. It has influence to communicate in that way. Second thing is, do you have deep desires? Um, so desires is, is important because desires can also catapult you into action. Then desires could be anything. It could be correlated. It could be figuring out how you have a more harmonious home life and a family life. So desires connected with thoughts are important. So the question is, what is a deep burning desire? Because we have desires all the time. So a burning desire, which helps you to catapult, is something that you're willing to burn your bridges behind you. You're willing to change. You're willing to change direction because of your desires. And in fact, there's, there's a story um, about an army general who was going into battle. And he landed on this island to battle with the opposition and they came in boats. Um, so the army general told the captains to burn the boats. So they burnt the boats and the army general said to his army, we've burnt the boats, actually there's no way back, so we have to march forward and we have to win the battle. So they went on to win the battle. So what are the things that you're willing to look behind you and make a change for? Next thing, um, do you have a BHAG? Something that's intense. Um, and BHAG is a term which is coined by um, Jim Collins uh, and Jerry Porras in the book, Built to Last. And it's a long-term goal which changes the very nature of business existence. So you can apply this to you personally. It stands for big, hairy, audacious goals. So what's the point of having a big, hairy, audacious goal? If you have a bigger goal, say your goal, say you're working in a junior role in marketing and your big goal is to become a chief marketing officer in a large organization. That's a, that's a very big goal from where you are now. But the power of these types of goals are that they will stretch you. They will pull you out of your comfort zone. 
So that's important to progress on this journey. And for different people, these big goals could be very different. And it's the intensity. Uh, and in fact, your goals might be very different. You may have experienced something in your life that's been an intense experience, which is getting into action. And MTP stands for Massive Transformational Purpose. Some of the largest organizations in the world have had these massive purposes. And there's a handful of organizations in the space of two, three years that have generated a billion dollar turnover because they had massive transformational goals. And a big goal, for example, an MTP example is Google. They've decided to categorize the world's information. Big goal. The next component is also important because you have to swing into action as well as having a goal. But what's important is the secret to getting ahead is actually getting started. You've got to break the overwhelming complex tasks into small manageable tasks and start the first one. So it's better for you to be persistent instead of spending hours on one task. It's better to spend 15 minutes a day consistently, nonstop for a longer period of time. So question here, is your mind working for you? So we do have a challenge. We're very busy at the moment. And your mind is, is sometimes not receptive for change. In fact, your mind is more receptive when it's less busy. So that's a challenge you've got on your hands. So when you're doing this piece of learning that you're looking at here, uh, you know, by all means, if you're busy right now, do play this back uh, when you're a little less busy. But it's important that your mind is in a state where it is receptive. And that's usually out of work hours, maybe before when you're going to sleep, before you um, go to sleep or when you're waking up. That's, that's at points when your mind is more receptive. In terms of what's, um, what's on your mind is, is also very important. Um, and I've mentioned it to before, this filter system that's in your brain, whatever you're thinking about, is what's going to be end, end up at the forefront of your mind. So that presents an interesting challenge if they, you are, have got things that you're worrying about. Um, and it's interesting, you know, I mean, some of the brain scientists talk about the impact of what you're thinking on your food. Um, so some of these, um, researchers look at, you know, if you're in a stressful, stressful, um, zone and you're um, worrying about lots of things what you eat can kind of affect you because uh, it's not it's converting uh, that food in, into something else and you probably experienced it um, if you work, wake up in the morning and your first thought is negative you're going to um, experience a string of negative thoughts straight after it and in fact this is a separate exercise which I've not got on this deck if you get a chance what I want you to do at some point is observe the thoughts in your mind. And one of the interesting things I want you to observe is if you have a negative thought, I want you to observe the next thought that comes into your mind and the next thought that comes into your mind. And what you'll discover is once you have one negative thought, it could spiral into another one and another one. So becoming conscious of these thoughts in your mind, which leads to my next slide. Uh, which is a question, what are you actually pouring into your mind? And you may have, um, and I've mentioned it, your thoughts influence actions. You may have heard of saying, stand guard at the door of your mind. You know, what are you letting into your mind? And I'll be talking about the revised qualifications, charting your marketing qualifications which is obviously a positive thing to be pouring into your mind. One of the important aspects is to understand is that knowledge is an asset. You will get a return of it on it in the future years to come. A great model to focus your mind um, is this. Um, it's a quite a popular model um, created by a guy called David Allen. 
He's one of the world's most influential thinkers on productivity. About 35 years experience as a management consultant. And he came up with a model GTD, getting things done. And it's a powerful product productivity model. A component of the model is his horizons of focus. Um, and you can look at all your tasks in different ways. So you can, uh, and he uses the analogy of an airplane taking off. So you've got 50,000 foot level down to the ground wave run le run runway level. So we've also already talked about purpose, vision, and why, um, and so on, which is your 50,000 foot. And then there's things rolling down from that, which is, um, you know, at 40,000 foot, what will your vision look like, sound like? At 30,000, what do you need to accomplish in the next 12 to 24 months to make your targets happen? 20,000 foot level two, what are the important spheres of your work and, and personal life to keep the engines running? Level one, what are the outcomes you want to achieve? These are projects which have got multiple uh, and the, the kind of multiple components. There might be campaigns that you're working on or projects you're working on. And then the runway level is um, the next physical visible action that you need to take. It might be a phone call that you need to make or an email you need to answer. So why am I talking about this model and the brain? Um, because it's important that you understand the different levels. And it's important that you know that you're going in the right direction. And I've, I've mentored thousands and coached thousands of marketers across the last 20 years. And I've come across scenarios where some people are too big, uh, vision, mission focused, and they don't do the ground level activity to get there. And then some people are stuck on the ground level activity and they wake up two years down the line and realize actually I haven't made progress to my and to my ideal role and where I want to be. So uh, this is a nice little quote. Um, if you're somebody uh, who I used to be like this a couple of years ago in, in, in my business, I used to start things and never complete things. So what does focus stand for? Follow one course of action, uh, course until success. Um, this is a concept that's been around for the last um, 150 years. So research researchers have been studying something called a flow state. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I, I could speak about this for hours. Um, and it's, and it's, maybe it's another webinar. Um, but what I want to make, uh, bring your attention to is this is very important because of the noise we have around us. You need to be working productively. productively. And the concept of flow is about, and you've, you've probably experienced this, you've probably done an hour's work and it felt as though you've done five hours work because your brain was in gear, the skills were right, and you were in flow, and you got a lot done in a short space of time. There's many factors that affect flow, um, and the term has come from the adventure sport athletes world as well, uh, from surfers, um, people, sports people who kind of play dangerous sports. And there's many, many, uh, terms for it, like being in the zone, in the moment. Um, and it's important to understand yourself and how you can get into flow. Um, and, and to give you an example of myself, when I'm doing a creative job, I'm more creative before 9, 10 a.m. in the morning. And if I was doing a creative task, I'd do it much faster than doing it in the afternoon or the evening. Uh, almost five times faster. And it's getting to know and understand flow. Um, and at a higher level, flow is an experience as well. So it's not just brain, it's physical. Um, and there's many examples. Uh, in fact, a good example is um, coders who, um, who do coding. They can go nonstop and produce magical work in a short space of time. And I remember a big example is uh, Steve Wozniak, um, who is one of the founders of Apple. Um, he, in his early days, he used to take about six months, I think, to create a game on an old system. Some of you all know Atari's other other computer system. It used to take six months to code a game. 
Um, and he sat down and coded the game in four days. He didn't sleep for four days, went nonstop. He actually created, I think it was the first, the tennis game where the ball was bouncing across the screen and you got two kind of people playing tennis. A very basic version of it going back um, about 20 plus years, 25 years. Um, but you can get into football and there's going to be many, there's many characteristics. Um, I want to talk about three potential blockers, uh, three fears that are going to be holding you back. Um, in fact, there's probably about seven fears, but I want to zone in and focus on three. Um, and these are common to everyone, not just marketers. But after doing a lot of coaching and coaching marketers, I'm finding that these three are on top and the big things that are stopping people from progressing. And it's good for you to be conscious about these things. So let's have a talk, look at the first one, uh, the fear of being judged. And you'll relate to some of these. So what if I, what if people laugh at me if I do something? What if I get embarrassed? Embarrassed. What if I'm not good enough? Feeling insignificant. I mean, this self-doubt is a killer of progression. What other people think of you? In fact, I've been mentoring a few marketers who were looking at the LinkedIn profile and they wanted to change the LinkedIn profile and they were concerned if they did X, Y, Z, what their colleagues in the, in the organization would think of them, uh, which is very interesting. Second one, fear of failure, another big one. So this fear, again, stops you from making progress because there's pain associated with it gets more challenging later in life, the more you go on. And in fact, babies don't have it. Um, you don't have it at a young age. But as you get older and older, this fear of being a perfectionist really um, presents an interesting challenge. And if you were to go out and study the most successful entrepreneurs and the marketers in the world, have a look at how many times they failed to get to where they got to. Some of them, if you hear the stories, they have, they've had about 120 rejections to get to where they've got to. And the reality is, this fear is an issue that's, stop, that's potentially stopping you. But the reality is, to get better, you have to fail. It's a learning mechanism that you have to go through to progress to the next level. And finally, there, there is a fear uh, for some people um, of a fear of success. And I've certainly experienced this across the last couple of years. Um, and what, what does it mean? You know, pressure, there is pressure that comes from success. So if you have been promoted or moved to the next level, you've got a new responsibility. You may have to behave a certain way. There's an expectation on you. For some of you, getting a level of success means you're leaving your friends and your family behind. So there's, there's some challenges um, around this. Uh, and there may be people around you who um, want to hold you back as well. So it's, it's, it's something to reflect on. So let's, let's go through a couple of exercises uh, because what I want you to do um, when you've got a moment is to go and do these exercises um, and uh, spend some time when you're less busy. Um, so the first one um, is to go and have a look at <clears throat> someone out there who is successful, who's achieved what you want to achieve. And you've got to come up with a set of questions. So you may have heard the saying, success leaves clues. So if you want to be a chief marketing officer, go and connect with a chief marketing officer. Learn from them. Ask them questions. So just a point on questions. The point on questions is um, you have to learn to ask the right questions. And there's, there's many things. Um, 
you know, a, a, a prudent question is one half of wisdom. The ability to ask great questions is important because the right question is going to give you the right answer. So life is a question. And you have to start the journey. As they say, as a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So to focus your mind, I want you to, as one of the exercises, I want you to think about your big three and start planning for this. So this big three might be three organizations you want to work for. It might be three roles you want to play in the future. It may be, if you're a freelancer or a consultant, it may be three clients you want to land or three deals you want to land. And the way I want you to think about this is if you landed one of these things, it's going to make a seismic shift in your individual situation. And you aligning yourself to this is you getting to know in depth what you need to do to align yourself to these. You have to be proactive to position yourself against these uh, big three. And you have to become relentless in pursuing, being determined, disciplined, to going for these. And if this is important, spend a consistent one hour per week zoned in, focusing on these areas, the who, the what, the how, about this big three. Get to know everything, the statistics, the data, the people, for you to align yourself. Come back to this filter in your brain. Once you start doing this, something magical will happen you will start seeing opportunities that are already in front of you. Another uh, couple of steps that I want you to have a look at is um, doing a SWOT analysis on yourself. So you, you're familiar with a SWOT analysis. Have you done it on yourself? Um, and there's a the power again of getting to know yourself. When you know yourself, you're empowered. When you accept yourself, you're invincible. The crop goes. So it's a powerful tool to apply to yourself. So you're looking at what you're naturally good at, what sets you apart, what you're a specialist, things that you struggle with, what is limiting you. The opportunities, what are you naturally good at, what sets you apart, what um, are your natural skills that are in demand out there. The threats, what happens if your job gets automated. So that's something to watch out for. Automation is happening and you need to plan for it. There's opportunities, there's things to get excited about. But the power of doing this SWOT analysis is you get to know what you can be the best in the world at. You get to, get to know what the big opportunities are out there for you. And you're also following a deep passion. Um, so one exercise you can do is a future scoping exercise. So this is something I'd recommend to get clarity. Um, there's two versions of this. Uh, one is take an A4 piece of paper, write down a 24-hour clock. Next, next to it, imagine a perfect future day in the future. So what time are you waking up? Where are you waking up? What job are you doing? Um, what are you doing throughout the day? Where are you having lunch? Who are you having it with? What car are you driving? So map out your perfect future day. There's also a rocking chair exercise, which um, uh, Jeff Bezos did and a lot of successful uh, entrepreneurs where they imagine themselves sitting on a rocking chair at the age of 85 or project yourself into the future. And the power of this is you project yourself into the future, but then you snap out of it. You've got to be in that zone. We snap out of it and you list all the regrets that you think that you should have done in your life. And Exercises like this will give you the clarity uh, for you to um, work on this personal development journey. So just to conclude uh, this, this part of the presentation, um, and there's a quote here, which is uh, from Abraham Lincoln, give me six hours to chop down the tree and I'll spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. So just to, I mean, if I was to summarize everything I've talked about here, Shopping the brain is important. I know you guys as marketers are working really hard in your roles. You're trying to progress. 
but the reality is you have to learn to work harder on yourself than your actual role. And in fact, the reality is if you did that, you should do better on your role and you get promotions. So it's something for you to reflect on yeah, in, in your mind. Okay, good. Let's uh, move on to uh, the second part of the presentation. So I'm excited to be talking about the revised uh, CIM qualifications. And I'm going to have a quick look at uh, level six uh, and some of the modules and what these mean. Um, so level six, uh, the level hasn't changed. It's all about developing your strategic skills, enabling you to progress into a ma management role. So um, it's a great qualification in terms of progressing you, progressing you from an operational level. You may also be an aspiring manager. You may have been working in management for a number of uh, number of years, but don't have a, a level six qualification. So it's good for a, a range of, of marketers. So the revised qualification um, uh, is, has gone live um, and the first assessment session uh, is available for April 2020. So let's just deep dive quickly into what the revised qualifications look like. So there's two qualifications here. Oh, they're on two separate slides. The first one is a diploma in professional marketing. So the way these qualifications works, there's mandatory modules and there's electives. So there's two mandatory modules here. So marketing and digital strategy, innovation in marketing, and the three electives that you can choose from. So to get your qualification, you need three modules. So you do the two and uh, the elective of your choice. And the three electives here, uh, customer, digital customer experience, resource management, and managing brands. So good selection of qualifications. And I'm really excited about these because CIM have gone out, done the research, um, and asked employers um, what is uh, required in the workplace. So there's been some adjustments in uh, creating this suite, uh, which uh, which is looking very exciting. And there's a diploma in professional digital marketing as well. So if you're taking a digital route, um, uh, there's three modules here that you can do. So um, the first module is common in both the marketing route and the digital route. So it's the same module, marketing and digital strategy. And then you've got two, uh, another two modules that you can do to achieve a diploma in professional digital marketing. So I'd probably recommend that you download it, have a look at the syllabus, see, if, see um, which route suits you. And depending on what your role is, it, you can go in a, either direction or you could also combine routes as well. Um, so I've been told officially that you can actually gain two qualifications. So if you have somebody who's split in the middle, don't know whether to do digital or go down the um, uh, kind of professional marketing route, then you can actually combine modules and come up with both qualifications. So you could um, uh, study the modules that are highlighted in blue here and come out with two qualifications, which is, an, which is one option. Uh, that you could take if you want to, to get both qualifications. But I think the key thing is to look at your role, look at what's relevant to you and, and your future and choose the relevant op options. And there's many people that can advise um, in the market on which direction you could take. Let me just run through. Um, so I'm heading towards the end of my presentation. If you do have questions, start popping them into the question box now. If you've got feedback on anything I've talked about, please put that in. I'll go through a couple of uh, questions here uh, on screen. Uh, question one, what, what do I do if um, I'm on the current existing qualification? Don't worry, uh, existing qualification is still running. Existing qualification is still relevant. Um, so you're not missing anything out. If you finish the existing qualification, you're still coming out with an official qualification, which is worth high value in the marketplace. And you've got till December next year to do it. Um, so the, the last exam board is, is quite a while off, so you've got plenty of time to finish it. Um, if you don't complete it, there are transition arrangements. 
So um, again, speak to whoever you're studying with if you're on an existing qualification. If you're planning on taking a break or if you don't get to finish it within the time frame. Um, when can I start the revised qualifications? There are some centres already delivering them now. So the centre I head up at MMC Learning has started delivering the revised qualifications in a, in a distance learning format if you're interested in, in distance learning. And have a look at the, uh, the kind of centres. I've got a screenshot here. I'll just I'll just show you where to get where to get where to find the qualifications. So if you navigate it on the CN website, two qualifications. Uh, and there's there's an option there you can see if you go and have a look at the revised qualifications. There's a study centre finder. Um, so depending on what your what type of study you want, whether it's face to face, depending on what location you're in, uh, depending on which modules you want to do, there's there's many options for you. There's there's a whole range of options and CM study centres uh, that you can connect with and and learn. Um, different routes and also depending on your budget for the different prices and so on so so there's there's a good range of centers and options for for everyone so that brings me to the end of the presentation before we start uh, taking a couple of questions um if you want to connect with me um feel free to ping me a connection on linkedin uh, if you want to find out more about the model i'm working on and also i've actually designed some of the questions that I've included on this webinar. I've actually designed a workbook, a marketing creative development workbook that you can take away and work on um, with a pen and a piece of paper. It's a digital document and, and there's more questions in there for you, for you to help you plan a successful career in marketing. Um, so if you want to connect to me on LinkedIn or drop me an email, I can send you a copy of the workbook. And also, if you if you really need further advice, I'm happy to jump on a 30 minute call with you to help you discover what you need to do. Like I said, my purpose and passion is to help you succeed. Um, so, and, and that's my team's purpose and that's the purpose I'm on. Um, I, I love working with marketers. I've been doing it for 20 years. So if you need help, don't be afraid to ping me a message. I can jump on a call with you. One of my experienced team can jump on a call with you advise you on your CV, your LinkedIn profile, and the best route you can take uh, going going forward. Okay, good. That brings me to the end of the presentation, Maureen. Uh, I don't know if there's a couple of questions that might be coming in. Brilliant. Thank you, Imran. Uh, we're now going to answer the questions that have been submitted. Uh, just as a reminder, you can still submit your questions via the chat box in the attendee control panel. So let's move to our first question. Uh, the first question is, I have my level six with driving innovation. What would I need to do to get my digital level six? Or is it best that I think about level seven? Um, okay, good. Um, so, so that's great that you've um, completed that module. In fact, let me just, uh, I can go back to that slide. So that's one of the mandatory um, modules. So, so you, you've got a couple of options here. Um, so if you've completed that module, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd recommend that you, you study the other modules at this level um, and, and try and get the complete qualification. I mean, obviously it depends, I don't know too much about your role. Um, so it depends on uh, what you're doing right now, uh, where you're heading to next, um, what your skill gaps are. Uh, if if the, there is a diagnostic online, it might be worthwhile you having a look at the CAM diagnostic. Um, but have a, have a look. I mean, there's um, if you look at the modules here, there's some great modules here on uh, the marketing digital strategy and, and the digital customer experience. And again, because you've got that mandatory module, you can combine and get both qualifications. Um, so so depending on on what your um, situation is i mean i'd certainly recommend completing uh, the level six um, i don't know more really if you have any thoughts around around that um, well. actually i probably miss uh, uh quoted the uh question um the person has actually got their level six with driving innovation so i'm assuming that that is the you know she already has her level six what would i need to do to get the digital level six so i'm assuming there that you would have to you know do the three 
um, modules required for the uh, level six. The level seven, obviously, is something to uh, uh, think about. Our um, leadership in marketing program is really designed for those people that probably are already in a, a senior marketing role or leadership role. Um, and obviously, I don't know the person's uh, background, but I mean, you've offered Imran an opportunity perhaps for individuals to speak to you. So, I mean, that might be yeah. uh, the best solution for this particular one. Great, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to jump on, on a call with you and, and give you uh, kind of personalized advice on which path to take. Brilliant, thank you. I've got some more general questions here, Imran. One of the questions was, can I just study one single module or do I have to study all the modules? Perfect, so um, that's, a, that's a very good point. Um, so you can now study individual modules and get award qualifications. Um, it's a popular route um, that people do, do take. Um, and especially if you're busy and can't commit to a nine to 12 month qualification, if there's a specific need that you have in, uh, and a gap that you have in your skills, yes, you know, I'd, I'd certainly recommend um, that you take the individual uh, awards. There's many centers delivering individual awards, uh, so have a look at when they're running. Uh, and it's a good option. And you still get an official qualification from the Chartered NCR Marketing for doing that individual award. Um, I've just had another question coming in uh, about uh, the level six. Are there any exemptions when one already has driving innovation award at level six? I'm not quite sure what they mean by exemptions there. I don't know if you've got any thoughts, Imran. Um, so if you've already done um, the, I mean, this is back to looking at the, um, if you've already got an existing qualification um, with the CIM at level six and you've done existing modules, there, are, there, are, there will be transition, um, I don't know if it's on the CM website yet, um, but there are transition arrangements. Um, so if you've already done the innovation module and, you, and you're uh, going to move from doing the existing qualification to the revised qualification, then yes, you, know, you, you don't have to do that module again. Um, so, so the learning outcomes map onto the new version of, of the innovation. So you don't have to do that module again. You'd have to do the others around it to get the qualification. But do you have a look at the same website? Um, and I think that might have been a, that might have been the question to the first person that asked the question as well, uh, similar. So, so yes, if you've done an existing module, which is mapped onto the revised, you don't have to do that module again. It's, it's, it's an exemption. Okay, a couple more uh, general questions. Are the modules exam or assignment based? Okay, so um, let's just flip back to this slide again. Um, so at um, the diploma, I don't need to flip back, they're all, they're all assignment based now. Um, so one of them used to be um, exam based. So, so right now, as it stands, um, all these modules are assignment based, um, so they're, which is great. Uh, and they're also work-based assignments. Uh, so there's again, there's a power ending work-based assignments because you've taken everything you've learned and you're applying it to your own organization. So some of the marketers that have been have qualified with us um, who have done these assessments, as a, on the back of it, they've actually got promotions and they've won clients because they've taken and uh, taken the modules, gone on a digital marketing strategy for for their organisation or for the client organisation, and and something uh, live has been produced at the end of it. Cool. Another question here. Do I have to be enrolled with a study centre to study this qualification or is there an option of self-study? Right. So um, if you are studying, um, the, the method of studying is um, to find a study centre, um, a place uh, to study. So that is the only route available. Um, so, I mean, if you have in a scenario where you've got very specific preferences, find the center that suits you. Um, so there's different centers at different levels. Uh, I mean, if you prefer self-study, maybe a distance learning center is, is good for you. Um, if you're somebody who needs to sit in a classroom, engage with the class, have people around you, then there's options for you to do face-to-face. -face. So, so again, feel free to connect to me and I can advise you on that. Brilliant, thank you. Um, another question here. Uh, can I take a break from studying midway through the qualification? Uh, so so the, the answer to that is yes. Um, the, you, 
you can, there's, there's some flexibility in the um, exam boards are available uh, inside the Charlie MCR marketing. So there's three exa exam boards in the year. Um, so if you decided that you wanted to do one module going into the next exam board, you can take a pause and go for a further exam board down the line. But I need to make you aware of possibly two things. Uh, firstly, check with your study centre, uh, if it's okay to do that. Uh, so technically, there's, there's no issue with that. And there's uh, come across many marketers who uh, who are who need because of life circumstances need to take a break for from the qualification. Um, so technically, yes, uh, you can do that. The second thing that uh, you need to make sure you're aware of um, is that there's components of the fees uh, which are related to a membership and the assessment fee. So the membership fee is an annual fee which you have to pay and it's actually a cheaper version as a study member you get the get the golden package at a, a low, lower cost um, but that that lasts one year so if you decide to delay your study um, and it goes over one year and you decide to, to do it the year after there's some fees that are going to be payable again uh, so so have a look at both and things the flexibility of your center that you're studying with and also what fees you might incur for pausing and restarting. Okay, thank you. Um, another question now, how many years experience do I need to study at a level six qualification? Um, okay, good question. Um, it's, it's a combination of, um, I'd say, experience and level. And I don't want to say, you know, have a couple of years experience. Um, because ideally you need to be progressing towards a management role to do the lab six. Um, so at the very least, uh, you need at least, uh, I'd say, two years experience. Um, there are um, options. I know there's kind of graduate gateway options. And, and it, it depends what your scenario is, whether you've, you're a kind of a, a university student um, who's graduated or you're somebody in the workplace. Um, so, so it kind of really uh, depends on, on the scenario. So um, experience is really good. Uh, there is a route to obviously get on because the entry criteria is for you to have the certificate or an equivalent level four qualification. You can get on to level six um, as well. Um, so so there, there's routes to get on with less experience. Um, but what's important is that, and, and what's important to understand is the assessment is uh, is assuming that you're um, working in a more strategic, strategic role. You've got to have um, the ability to apply the assessment to the organization. And the assessment is more strategic rather than operational. Um, so it's whether you can um, uh, really progress and be able to tackle the assessment at level six. Um, so that's a long, a long winded way of answering the question. So experience is really good, but also you know, having the right qualifications can actually qualify you uh, for level six as well. So if you've got higher level marketing qualifications, if you've got level four uh, qualifications, again, uh, feel free to send me your CV. I'll have a look at it and advise you on the next step. Great. Thanks, Imran. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. I'd like to say a big thank you to Imran for presenting this webinar and thank you to everyone attending today. Uh, once you leave today's webinar, you'll receive a survey survey on the presentation and we'd appreciate it if you would provide your feedback. On behalf of CIM, thank you for joining us today and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.